Hello, I am Dr. Mark Schirmerhorn, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about when to refer patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis. There are nearly 800,000 strokes each year in the United States, and stroke is the third leading cause of death. 10 to 20 percent of strokes may be caused by carotid atherosclerosis. Treatment of carotid stenosis before stroke would be preferred since most strokes are not preceded by TIA. Three randomized trials have addressed this issue. The Asymptomatic Carotid Atherosclerosis Study, or ACAS, the Asymptomatic Carotid Surgery Trial, or ACST, and the VA Cooperative Trial randomized a total of 5,223 patients to best medical therapy alone versus best medical therapy plus carotid endarterectomy for asymptomatic carotid stenosis greater than 60%. The three studies showed very similar results. The risk of subsequent stroke within five years with best medical management was 11% in ACAS and 12% in ACST. With endarterectomy, the risk of perioperative stroke or death or subsequent stroke in five years was significantly lower, only 5% in ACAS and 6% in ACST. This translates to a relative risk reduction of 50% and an absolute risk reduction of 6% in these large trials. An important caveat is that the perioperative stroke or death rate was low, less than 3%, which is an important benchmark to achieve in order to derive benefit from a prophylactic procedure designed to prevent strokes. Additionally, patients with extensive comorbidity and short life expectancy were excluded from these trials. Patients such as this, with an increased risk of perioperative complications and short life expectancy, would in general not be as likely to benefit from intervention on an asymptomatic carotid stenosis. Given that only 12% of patients with asymptomatic moderate to severe carotid stenosis went on to develop stroke, it would be preferable to identify those with greatest risk for development of stroke to target treatment. There is ongoing research suggesting that evidence of silent embolization by cerebral imaging or transcranial Doppler may identify a subgroup at increased risk. Additionally, Certain plaque characteristics detected by duplex ultrasound or other imaging techniques may be able to detect a more vulnerable plaque with greater risk of embolization. Evidence of plaque progression over time has also been correlated with increased risk of subsequent stroke. It is important to remember that best medical therapy should be employed in all patients with carotid stenosis. This would typically include antiplatelet therapy and lipid-lowering therapy with statin medications for the majority of patients. Vascular surgeons specialize in the medical management of carotid stenosis as well as surgical treatment and can aid in the choice of appropriate medical therapy even in those who are not candidates for endarterectomy due to extensive comorbid disease or lower-grade stenosis. These patients should also be counseled in the control of other atherosclerotic risk factors, including smoking cessation and control of hypertension and diabetes. Most patients who are not candidates for endarterectomy due to excess medical risk or lower grade stenosis will be followed to detect development of symptoms referable to the carotid system or for progression of stenosis by ultrasound. Many patients who would not be considered appropriate for endarterectomy while asymptomatic would be candidates for intervention if they became symptomatic. Additionally, evidence of progression may prompt changes in medical management and reevaluation for possible endarterectomy. The appropriate role of carotid stenting for the treatment of asymptomatic carotid stenosis remains to be determined at this time. Vascular surgeons are participating in ongoing research and have the ability to provide both treatments. Recent advances in medical management may alter the natural history of asymptomatic carotid stenosis. However, in the recent ACST trial, the more routine use of statin therapy later in the trial did not impact the benefit of endarterectomy over medical management alone. Based on the accumulated evidence from large randomized trials, patients with asymptomatic carotid stenosis and life expectancy of five years or more who do not have significant comorbidity that would put them at substantially increased risk of perioperative complications should be referred for evaluation for carotid endarterectomy. 
The determination of perioperative risk is typically determined by the primary care physician and vascular surgeon jointly. Those with lesser degrees of stenosis or excess operative risk still benefit from referral to a vascular surgeon to help monitor for progression of disease and for assistance with medical management. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.